Nah, brother. Okay. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. This is yeah. the brother Bana. Shalom, Yasharala. This is the brother Nathan. And we're here together through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. You know, Lord willing, this uh, lesson is edifying, straight to the point. But we got some stuff to report on regarding the, uh, you know, the latest Israeli uh, Palestinian conflict and some of these, uh, you know, gears of war turning, man. Mm -hmm. You know, getting that third woe uh, pushed forward. And uh, we are here to send out the report due to this lining up with biblical prophecy. So okay. first and foremost, as always, we want to begin by giving all praises and honor and glory unto our power. Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rakat Kodash. And double honors is due to our elder apostles, bishops of Great Millstone, who rule well and teach well. Shalom to the Akim, laboring in his truth and sincerity, pushing his word across all four winds, risking their lives and freedoms to do so. Shalom. And Shalom to the believers, the hopeful elect, the tabernacle of David, raising up in these latter days. Peace be unto you in your households. Mm -hmm. That's right. Shalom yeah. to the 12 right. tribes of Israel, so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Haitians, West Indians, Israelite foreigners are scattered abroad. Those who derive from the sea line of our forefather right. Jacob. So, without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Um, yeah, bear with me just one moment as we share the screen here. And we're going to go ahead and share some videos. So, Mm -hmm. This is going to be a, a video. This is uh, Israeli forces sharing the video footage of the airstrike in Gaza. Happened, uh, uh, you know, our time late last night and uh, Saturday, to be specific. August 5th here. This one has no uh, audio. But this is uh, uh, just one of the videos of the airstrike there that the Israeli forces, the Amalekites, uh sent forth to gaza there in palestine mm -hmm. that's right mm -hmm. and as we will read they were intentionally uh you know reportedly seeking after uh you know top militants of the uh, opposing you know quote unquote um palestinian militant forces okay which they refer to as jihad. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to an uh, article here. This is from Insider Paper. We haven't finished yet. Israel Army spokesman on the Gaza operation. Go ahead and let the brother Nathan take over. Okay. Yeah, Israel's army said it's Friday airstrikes in Gaza killed an estimated 15 enemy combatants, warning that the operation against the Islamic Jihad militant group was not over, quote unquote. We are assuming about 15 killed in action, Army spokesman Richard Hecht reported, uh, Salakia told reporters. We haven't finished yet, he added, describing the operation as a, quote unquote, preemptive attack targeting a senior commander of Islamic Jihad. And so claiming to have targeted Islamic Jihad, right? Um, preemptive attack. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Just for edification's sake, I'm going to go ahead and look up that term preemptive. Con. And uh, per Google here, it actually uh, reads uh, serving or intended to preemptive or preempt or forestall something, especially to prevent attack by assembling the enemy. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. So they're taking precautions, if you will, right? They're taking uh, action in order to prevent, you know, further uh, further conflict. Uh, you know, uh, another attack. Kind of, yeah, kind of. Exactly. And, and so, uh, in anticipation of this, right? You know, in anticipation of an attack, reports that that are, are uh, indicative of an attack that may take place against Israeli, um, you know, civilians, if you will. You know whether it be military forces or uh, civilian personnel okay thus they are they are taking this uh, this offensive you know in, in a form of, of being defensive right so so they're trying to prevent further uh further bloodshed of their own people by taking action against the uh the presumed enemy Khan, this is uh 
a reading here from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Adawan, Yahweh that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath proposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall, at the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. That's right. So just for edification's sake, let's break down the term here for council, the council of the Adawan and the Hebrew here in the Strong's Hebrew. Strong's H6098, Eitsa, Eitsa. Right. Amongst the definitions also goes into a plan. Okay. An advice, advisement, counsel, purpose. Right. That's right, man. So him uh, raising up the conflict there in uh, the the uh, Amalekite, the Amalekites, uh, you know, land that they're inhabiting now. They're in uh, Israel, you know, the land of our forefathers, them inhabiting it right now, defiling it. But um, the Adawan, his purpose to, uh, you know, to raise up conflict there, to utterly destroy them. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. And, uh, you know, that pursuing to uh, the book of Joel, you know, the uh, third chapter, I believe it is, right? The, um, you know, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, you know? Yahweh Shapat. Yahweh Shapat. That's right. And the, in the Hebrew going into right, that's where Yahweh's the, judgment. Uh, the uh, third woe will take place there in the Valley of Yahweh Shapat. That's right. Yahweh's judgment, Yahweh's decision. Mm -hmm. But these Amalekites, you know, being the least of the flock, you know, a very uh, uh, small land there, you know, where Amalek of Edom uh, dwells there, you know, mm -hmm. and they are going to uh, draw out Babylon here, where Babylon will be, uh, you know, charged with going and trying to defend the Amalekites there in Israel, the where the Litterhatters dwell there to uh, defend Amalek and ultimately be pulled into the third woe. Mm -hmm. That's right. But, you know, Yahweh's purpose to, uh, you know, to pull out uh, Babylon, America, you know, where Esau, Edom's uh, capital is now, and to, uh, you know, pull them into that third woe to be uh, utterly destroyed with their, uh, uh, you know, them, moving their chess pieces involving this third woe and ultimately uh being you know hit with the uh ultimate strikes via the uh, hypersonic missiles that's right i just want to go into the through the spirit i just want to pull up a couple definitions from the compact bible dictionary okay so amalek okay the amalek, we'll, we'll go into amalek first it says son of eliphaz the eldest son of esau by his concubine Timna, okay. So it references a couple of scriptures here. The Duke of Edom, mm -hmm. the Dukes of Edom. So dukes are, are also likened unto princes. Mm -hmm. That's right. And when we go into the Compact Bible Dictionary, we reference the information on Teman, T E M A N, goes into. So in uh, Amalek being a, a grandson of Esau, their mm -hmm. forefather, and, and uh, that's per uh, the Book of Genesis. And it says right here in, in the definition for Teman, when it's the grandson of Esau, right? Mm -hmm. So Teman being the grandson of Esau, okay? And it says an Edomite chief, a city in northeastern Edom, noted at one time for the wisdom of its people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Teman likened them to the, um, you know, the Germanic offspring of Esau of Edom today, you know? Mm -hmm. These uh, Germans that are, are the uh, the offspring of Esau of Edom, descendants of Edom, but them being the uh, you know the uh, scientists, the physicists, the uh, engineers, and whatnot, you know those of the the Nuremberg trials who got important, you know uh, uh, the Warner von Braun's of the world, you know who got pardoned and is what became the uh, head of NASA. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
you know, a lot of these uh, Americans, the so-called, uh, uh, you know, the so-called white man, the Edomite here in America today, most of them are from a Germanic ancestry. Mm -hmm. That's right. But, you know, uh, uh, Timon, you know, that also goes into uh, uh, these uh, Ashkenazi Jews. The Ashkenazi Jews have a Timonite background, a Germanic ancestry. Mm -hmm, that's right. And, uh, just so, real quick. Uh, as you can say that uh, Amalek has a, a Germanic uh, ancestry to it. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. And just real quick to add on to that, you know, um, after the Nuremberg trials and whatnot, after World War II, okay, there were a lot of, uh, you know, German Nazi scientists, quote unquote, you know, if you will, that had, uh, you know, ultimately uh, been given that pardon and, and uh, you know, were brought here to the Americas or, or to North America, okay, here to the U.S. to be partakers in the, uh, you know, in, in founding NASA and developing, you know, the, uh, you know, technology during the, during the space race, right, if you will. With which took place, you know, against, uh, you know, against Gog, Magog, you know, the Russians, right? And um, also just to just prove the fact that many of those Germans, you know, were also, uh, quote unquote Germans, you know, so-called Germans were also Timonites, you know, were taken over to the land of Russia, okay? Not only that, but also there were many that migrated and ended up in Argentina and, and abroad, you know? So those are those are uh, a few places that those uh, Timonites, okay, uh, no, I'm gonna, handing it up. I'm gonna read from uh, this is Ger Genesis uh, chapter thirty six and verse nine. It reads, "And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons: Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Esau, Revel." the son of Bashamath, the wife of Esau, and the sons of Eliphaz were Temin, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kanaz. Mm. And, um, you know, Kanaz, you could also link that up with Ashkenaz, mm. which are Ashkenazi Jews. And it says, uh, and Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare Eliphaz, Amal Amalek. Mm -hmm. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. Mm -hmm. So there you go. The um, firstborn son, uh, Eliphaz, one of, born of Ada, the wife of Esau, she bare Amalek. So the uh that'd be the grandson of esau mm -hmm. that's right mm -hmm. all right so thus the amalekites the little hatters okay who are the imposters over there in the holy land now the little hatters are the the direct from the direct lineage of esau okay mm -hmm. in the sense that they are uh from the progenitor esau okay the twin brother of our forefather the progenitor of the 12 tribes of israel our forefather jacob which they with Esau and Jacob deriving from the seed line of our forefather Isaac through Abraham. Okay, but the blessing was given to our forefather Jacob, which was ultimately sold by Esau. Okay, but we'll continue on here. So again, um, you know, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Okay. Now, in these latter days, you know, as we see the gears of war turning, how about Shimi Hal Shah is turning things up? Okay, and um, you know, the US is, is more or less playing the role of, of big brother, playing the role of guard unto the Amalekites, unto the little hatters, Israel, okay? Because you have, pursuant to Ezekiel chapter 38, you have Russia playing the guard, the bear, right? They're playing the role of the guard, okay? They're heavy hitters. Now, China is very much a viable player as far as being um, not only a, an economic and, and fiscal resource, you know, but also militarily, but ultimately Russia, it is through the spirit and through the powers of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It is that superior force, God. and we know that that um, you know that war, that third world in the Valley of Yahweh Shapat, 
is going to get rid of a lot of these, you know, inhabitants of the Holy Land now, the mm -hmm. land of our forefathers, the mm -hmm. land of Jacob, his mm -hmm. forefathers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to clear all the uh, Amalekites and the inhabitants in the land thereof that are defiling it now and clearing them out, getting ready, you know, mm -hmm. for the, the true sons of the Most High to re-inhabitate that land. Mm -hmm. Pursuing to, uh, you know, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Mm -hmm. That's right. But, um, you know, that that lease of the flock, Amalek, you know, uh, son of uh, Teman, is going to draw out Esau of Edom being chiefly here in uh, America, Babylon, to go and defend them. So it's going to draw them out to go and defend them. And they're going to be destroyed for sticking their neck out and involving themselves in that role in the third uh woe that world war three and pursuing to jeremiah 49 and 21 the earth is going to be moved at the noise of their fall so the the fall of babylon pursuing to revelations the 18th chapter mm -hmm. and uh at that cry the noise thereof was heard in the red sea so mm -hmm. you know you could liken that unto the the uh, next exodus of the elect. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, where the whole earth heard the great deliverance of the Israelites out of Egypt. And they're going to be uh, uh, likened them to uh, Bob Shah, uh, go and take that, but uh, likened them to uh, when the next exodus is going to be known for our great deliverance out of the land of the north. Mm -hmm. As, and uh, that's pursuing to Salakia. I don't remember that off the top. Uh, I think it's the book of Jeremiah. But let me uh, go ahead and then add on to this thought here. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. Right. So the earth is moved. Okay. And what's going to cause that? That's going to cause, that's going to be caused by thermonuclear IB, ICBM. That's right. ICBM destruct, you know, hypersonic missiles. Okay. That's how the earth is going to be moved. And, it's like, man. And, um, uh, and also uh, it says at the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Right. So again, you know, not only Babylon, America being affected. Okay. In the sense, but also referring to the Holy Land. Okay. The little hatters that are going to be affected there in the Valley of Yahweh Shapat. Okay. The Valley of Yahweh's decision and th in the third woe. Okay. So the Red Sea. Of course, being in that area. Okay. So that's how that this uh these devils, you know, are, are gonna, you know, are gonna be affected. And also that the uh the cry of the uh those kings and those kingdoms that were being made rich, you know, those who are being able to, uh, able to benefit from from their um their doings, if you will, from their business, okay, from from the you know, dealings with America, Babylon. The mother of harlots okay so they're no longer going to be able to be uh made fat and wax rich in that sense you know from the mother of harlots making them drink from the wine of the wrath of her fornication okay so you know it's going to be a changing of the uh of the guard if you will okay so we're going to transition here into the uh video here from the response Okay, from the Palestinian militants, quote unquote, also known as the jihad. And you could hear him saying, and that sounds like he's saying Amalek. Amalak, Amalak. So and through the spirit, you know. We, we see that the uh, those little hatters, Amalek, got some coming to him, as well as Esau of Edom. But, um, you know, I just wanted to bring that out. The scripture that I was thinking of, speaking of the deliverance of our people and uh, being likened them to uh, Jeremiah 49, 21, is also spoken of in Jeremiah 23, starting at verse 7. And it reads, Therefore, behold, the days set the Adawan Habashim Yahshai that they shall no more say, the Adawan liveth 
which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Adawan, Yahabashim Yahab Shai liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, so out of North America here, Babylon, and from all the countries whither I had driven them, so Israel being scattered across all four winds here, and they shall dwell in their own land. So being brought to the land of our forefathers, pursuant to the, the book of Isaiah chapter 14. So the whole earth is going to know this next great Exodus story being the deliverance of the Israelites, the elect out of Babylon here in North America, be, being uh, America itself, Babylon. So that is going to be the story that is told after the elector pulled and America is destroyed here. That's right. So as you continue on here, it says, insiderpaper.com reports, it says, Islamic Jihad says 100 rockets fired at Israel from Gaza. Okay, says so the Palestinian militant group, Islamic Jihad group says, it fired more than 100 rockets at Israel on Friday as an initial response to deadly Israeli airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. Quote, unquote, as an initial response to the killing of senior commander Taisir al-Jabari and his brethren martyrs, the al-Quds Brigade covered Tel Aviv, central cities, and areas surrounding Gaza with more than 100 rockets, is Islamic Jihad military's wing said in its statement. That's right. And when you hear of 100 rockets, you know, being shot in something that is, is a... Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and liken it to a, a small uh, battle as of now. But that's when you hear when the elder prophets, you know, the elder apostles speak of a hundred or hundred million uh, missiles being shot at Babylon. You know, that that makes more sense when you hear of the production rates of all these nations, you know, when it comes to their missile production rate. Uh, being boosted to the max level right now, being mm -hmm. uh, kicked up in these gears of war. But when you hear of just in, in, in one night without major war uh, actually being, uh, uh, you know, declared there between uh, Israel and Palestine, 100 rockets being sent, you know, that 100 million, mm -hmm. you know, 200 million. or 200 million mm -hmm. does not sound uh, far-fetched, man, mm -hmm. it does not. That's right. That's right. Especially when you hear of reports of underground cities housing, you know, nuclear missiles and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, an underground city, not just a base, not just a bunker, no, but a whole city's worth. Right. right. So so it is not far fetched, like the Akhbanaj just said, you know, the AP News reports here, Israeli strikes on Gaza kill 10, which, of course, has been uh, updated since, which we will get into, it says uh, Israel unleashed a wave of airstrikes on Friday on Gaza, killing at least 10 people, including a senior militant. According to Palestinian officials, Israel said it targeted the Islamic Jihad militant group in response to a quote-unquote imminent threat following the recent arrests of other senior militants. Hours later, Palestinian militants launched a barrage of rockets as air raid sirens wailed in Israel, and the two sides drew closer to another all-out war. Islamic Jihad claimed to have fired 100 rockets. That's right, man. So it says right here, Israel and Gaza's militant Hamas rulers have fought four wars and several smaller battles over the last 15 years. At a staggering cost, Mr. Lockyer, at a staggering cost to the territory's 2 million Palestinian residents. Okay. So it says right here, which we, we just witnessed that video, a blast was heard in Gaza City where smoke poured out of the seventh floor of a tall building. Video released by Israel's military showed the strikes blowing up three guard towers with suspected militants in them. And that's pretty much the point here, okay? But they're claiming, quote, unquote, and it says that in a nationally televised speech, Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid said his country launched the attacks based on concrete threats. Right? This government has a zero tolerance policy for any attempted attacks of any kind from Gaza toward Israeli territory, Lapid said, 
Israel will not sit idly by when there are those who are trying to harm its civilians. Mm -hmm. He added that, quote unquote, Israel isn't threatened in a border conflict in Gaza, but will not shy away from one either. Sorry, man. So they're talking big noise. They're puffed up. They're puffed up right now. And they know that they have the U.S. back in them. So right now they are in a, in a position where they are uh, not only, you know, making offenses against uh, proposed, you know, Iranian targets in Syria on Syrian soil. But now they are, again, engaging in this conflict against uh, proposed, you know, Palestinian militants in Gaza. So they're trying to fight. A, a, they're trying to create conflict and fight a war on two fronts, if you will. OK, but again, being the least of the flock. They're going to need the aid of Big Brother, okay, and their guard, you know, as, you know, as Russia is the guard to these, uh, you know, BRICS nations and the like thereof, okay, the U.S. has invested billions upon billions of military aid and dollars and whatnot technology into Israel and, and is, you know, they anticipate to continue to do the same for the coming years. However, you know, again, this is the year of the turnip, as was deemed by Elder Apostle Tahar. And, you know, we do not know how, if that, if they're even, you know, we do not know how much longer this place is going to last before the kingdom of Yahweh Shim is ushered in. And we hasten the day. We hasten, we hasten, we eagerly await the return of our Lord and Savior, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Um, it says uh, here that, you know, that airstrike killed several people, including a senior militant, but also wounded 40 others. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go ahead and show, you know, who some of those victims may be. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, go ahead. Giant inside a paper reports six children. Among 24 dead in Gaza violence, new Palestinian toll it says the death toll from the latest violence in Gaza has risen to 24, including six children, health authorities in the territory said Saturday. But Israel denied conducting a new strike that reportedly killed minors. Gaza's health ministry blamed, quote unquote, Israeli aggression for the deaths that also include an elderly woman and for the 203 people wounded. All right, so continuing on, it says Israeli security forces did not strike in Jabali in the past few hours. It has been irrefutably proven that this incident was the result of the misfiring of a rocket launched by Islamic Jihad. Right, and that's uh, from the Israeli government. Right, okay. So that was an Israeli government statement that blamed them. Okay, that blamed their own people. It says, quote unquote, we have in our possession videos that prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that this incident was not the result of an Israel Defense Forces strike. All right, so it says it was not immediately clear how many children were killed in the Jabalia strike. One child, a five-year-old girl, was killed in an airstrike on Friday, the health minister said in an earlier toll. So, yeah, man, so, you know, the U.S., Israel, they're, they're all trying to save face, try to claim that they're you know, going after top militants as such. Okay. Mm -hmm. The U S obviously backing Israel in the, in these, uh, you know, in these strikes, so on and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to save face. They're, they're trying to look That's good right, to the man. public. And these elite Edomites do not care who they have to sacrifice in order to establish their NWO. Mm -hmm. You know, all they care about is preserving that 1%, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. So real quick, we're going to check the comment board. All right, cool. We good. All right, let's keep rolling. Yeah, so we're going to check over here now to Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 45. But I take it away. Out. And this reads, Therefore ye hear the counsel of the Adawan, Yahweh Shemiel Shai, that he hath taken against Babylon, and his purposes that he hath proposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. That's right. So the land of the Chaldeans referring to Babylon, America. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as this place will be cleansed by thermonuclear destruction, chariot fire, and be made utterly desolate, uninhabitable. Okay. Thus the Holy Land. Okay. In particular, the land of Israel over there. Okay. God. Also going to face some serious, uh, you know, some serious indignation, man. That's right. So righteous all, anger. all this is 
at the purpose and the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you know, mm-hmm. as he he declared this also in uh, Salakia. What was that uh, yeah, previous sure. chapter? Around Jeremiah 49, uh, 49 right? Mm-hmm. Where it says the least of the flocks shall draw them out. Mm-hmm. So him uh, uh, restating this is a, a declaration of his purpose and his will against Babylon, against Edom and Amalek, mm-hmm. and to uh, utterly destroy them. Eh? Mm-hmm. Surely he shall make their des- their habitation desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. Mm-hmm. So the earth moving to and fro like a drunkard when these missiles hit. Mm-hmm. That's right. At the noise, right? Mm-hmm. So what's going to be causing that great noise? ICBM, hypersonic missiles. That's right. Right? Okay, so the, ba- the, the taking of Babylon, right? Taken by force, taken by violence. Okay? The earth is moved, right? As was read again in Jeremiah 49, and the cry is heard among the nations, right? So again, as the Akbana said, you know, pursuant to Revelation chapter 18, okay, that these kings, these other nations know that it's a changing of the guard, that the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to be ushered in, and that the ways of Babylon America are no longer going to be, uh, you know, influencing, you know, the rest of the world, That's okay? Right. But they will not be able to reap the, um, mm-hmm. the, the, mm-hmm economic the financial gain of exporting to america because america is very much a country that relies on importing goods mm-hmm. okay. yeah to my understanding uh i believe that america has roughly 10 percent of the world's population okay the u.s however they import um uh, a, a 40 percent roughly um you know in a ballpark you know salakia for for the number being you know in, you know just a ballpark right now but Roughly 40% of the world's imports, you know, could be could be a little bit less. However, a, a good portion of the world's imports come to Babylon, America, thus making these other countries, okay. you know, very that, lucrative. That's due to these one percenters, these elite Edomites maximizing their their income, you know, mm-hmm. maximizing that profit uh, margin mm-hmm. by being able to take advantage of exporting these companies mm-hmm. to countries where they do not have to pay a livable uh, uh, wage mm-hmm. and, and they are able to capitalize on slave conditions mm-hmm. and just to land back off that thought you know they're already seeing the effect of it with the failing of the u.s dollar mm-hmm. and the euro okay as these economies continue to dip the s p 500 the stock market within the united states continues to fail and Thus, the power of the dollar, okay, is dwindling, mm-hmm. okay? They've even put, you know, the U.S., NATO, EU nations have imposed these sanctions on Russia and, and the likeness thereof. However, through the BRICS nations and through their alliances, through their ability to sustain each other economically, okay, as we will continue to read on, you know, they, they have, uh, you know, formed strong alliances and strengthened their, their relationships with the countries that they have affiliations with. Thus, they have been able to um, forego, you know, their, their dealings and, and um, you know, many relationships, you know, with Babylon, America, with NATO, EU nations. And they know. And now the the, the Arwan Yahal Bashim Yahal Shah has been able to flip the script. So now all these other nations that have uh, imposed these sanctions upon Russia, OK, and so on and so forth are now, you know, more or less they've, uh, quote unquote, shot themselves in the foot. OK, they're feeling the brunt of it. And it's affecting their economy. It's affecting their governmental bodies. You have prime ministers resigning, you know, and uh, leaders being, uh, you know, swapped in and out. OK, because their governments are in disarray and they're not in agreement with each other, whether it be on the uh, Russia and Ukrainian proxy war and, and all that the countries are devoting to to that effort or never or, or ultimately these sanctions again that are causing you know, um, hardships amongst their people. Ultimately, it always comes down to the people and, and they're uh, they're not considering those things. Well, we'll go on and read now, transition a little bit, which we refer to that proxy war. This is from ZeroHedge.com. U.S. prepares to send $1 billion in latest Ukraine weapons package. Okay, this was just reported yesterday, Friday, August 5th. It says the Biden administration is reportedly about to send one billion dollars more in U.S. taxpayer-funded aid to Ukraine in what will be one of the largest packages so far. 
Now it says the aid will include munitions for long range weapons and armored transport vehicles, according to three anonymous sources who added that the package had not yet been signed by President Biden and could change in value and content before a deal is done. As it currently stands, the assistance includes munitions for Hamas, Nasmas, surface to air missile system ammunition. So again, abbreviations for those and up to 50 M113 armored vehicle transports, right? So again, surface to air missiles. So more or less weapons, ammo, you know, things as such and medical transport vehicles. Okay. okay. And we know that Esau is doing this in order to buy himself more time mm -hmm. to establish his NWO, his Karagma, all these things. But he doesn't want to fully get involved with Russia moving uh, westward and create this uh, third world war to really kick off. Mm -hmm. So That's he's right. buying himself time with his, uh, you know, with his contributions to uh, providing resources for Ukraine and these other countries, which are at the uh, first line of defense, so to speak here. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, you get these, uh, it says the Heavenly Father is moving these chess pieces on the right hand and the left. Okay. The U.S. is also using these countries such as the Ukraine and Taiwan as pawns. Okay. So he's using the Ukraine to occupy the Russians. And, ulti and ultimately, they're going to use the Taiwanese to occupy the Chinese. Okay. And as we'll read into, you know, tensions are rising between the Chinese and the Japanese. Okay, between Moab and Ammon. Okay, and I've got a, a precept here, Baba Pusha. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 34, and verse 18 says, He that sacrificeth of a thing wrongfully gotten, his offering is ridiculous, and the gifts of unjust men are not accepted. So, mm -hmm. you know them trying to uh, act like they're doing these things of good faith, quote unquote, these are, are abominations unto the most high mm -hmm. because this, these uh, monetary gains that Esau is sitting on, that he is contributing to these places are, are, you know, have devious, um, you know, intentions mm -hmm. and they're ultimately wrongfully gotten at the expense of him, uh, you know, getting these uh gains by by rape rob and pillage of our people man mm -hmm. that's right and this is a ridiculous offering unto yahweh him acting like he is doing it to uh serve a, a better purpose mm -hmm. Ka, covetousness yeah. that ill-gotten gain mm -hmm. and that's exactly what they're doing they're trying to save face and sell a narrative yeah. to the american people and, and and that of the world acting like they're really there to help mm -hmm. you know Ka to be a quote unquote world leader when we know that they only have their own private intentions, mm -hmm. which are not going to be for anybody else, but those one percenters. Okay. When he says, uh, the most high is not pleased with the offerings of the wicked. Neither is he pacified for sin by the multitude of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So That's this right. is not going to pacify the most high and get him from the judgment and the uh, ultimate recompense that he has for Esau of Edom and these Babylonians and, and as well as these Amalekites. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, man, again, they're trying to save face and sell a narrative to the people and uh, create further uprisings, okay? And, and uh, allow themselves to further their agenda without any backlash, okay? Mm -hmm. without, without any friction, without, uh, you know, any blowback, if you will, okay? So they're trying to you know, keep, continue to keep the uh, American people and, and those of the EU, NATO, you know, nations, um, you know, those who are contributing to this proxy war, okay, they're trying to keep them in the dark and continue to let them think and push that narrative that they're yeah. doing something good. Let them think that they're really there, they're going to protect them, that they're really going to be there for their best interests. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but really knowing that the uh, UN and the EU being the ultimate sham, and the thing that's going to get the uh, beast to hate the whore being Babylon America. Okay. You know, right. but that beast being that EU NATO system. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. So we'll continue on. Okay. Now it says the new package comes on the heels of a recent Pentagon decision to offer medical treatment to the Ukrainians as the U 
at a U.S. military hospital in Germany near Ramstein Air Base. Okay, but further down, here's the point here. Now, it says, uh, no, of course, well, I'll read this too. It says, it also comes on the heels of separately security assistance package worth up to $550 million, which was announced by the Pentagon last Monday, which includes additional ammo for the high mobility artillery rocket systems, H-I-M-A-R-S, HIMARS. So again, high mobility artillery rocket systems. The point here, though, says the new package would be funded under the presidential drawdown authority, the PDA, in which the president can authorize the transfer of articles and services from U.S. stocks without congressional approval in response to an emergency. Mm -hmm. Right. So he can bypass the Congress. OK, mm -hmm. he doesn't need their approval. He can bypass Congress and just sign it away. That sounds uh, very similar to martial law. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. A lot of uh, with martial law, medical martial law, when it's going to be implemented. OK, there's going to be many, many American rights and, and your Bill of Rights and your so on and so forth. Done Con away with. Con but ultimately, the president could go into a, a Drake, draconian authority where he does not need legislature and Congress to pass his own authority. He can make that declaration without having to uh, go through the checks and balances. Con, exactly right. And so pretty much we'll, we'll yeah. flip back real quick. All right, cool. Yeah, we're good. Over. yeah so now yeah, we're going to let you know. Con. Yeah, we're going to hop over now to mir.co.uk, okay, website out of the UK. 100,000 North Korean soldiers could be sent to join Vladimir Putin's forces in Ukraine. And it says North Korea has made it clear through diplomatic channels that as well as providing builders to repair war damage, it is ready to supply. A vast fighting force reported Regnum News Agency. That's right, man. So that's right, man. Uh, Kim Jong un, uh, you know, supporting uh, Russia, which is also supporting China as they've declared they're in unison, you know, solidarity, uh, roughly paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it says a leading defense expert in Moscow, Reserve Colonel, Colonel Igor. Korochenko told State TV, we shouldn't be shy in accepting the hand extended to us by Kim Jong-un. Says North Korea has made it clear. And who has been testing their hypersonic missiles all year? Who has been uh, showing off with military parades, their power, you know, just ready to uh, uh, be involved in something? That is North Korea, man. And them, uh, uh, you know, really taking South Korea by the neck you know them earlier this year with their uh u.s conflict with you know with the u.s involving themselves with south korea you know trying to uh help them get out of the uh the grips so to speak of north korea we know that north korea sees the taiwan china issue the same as they are dealing with south korea yeah, North Korea has, has definitely done a, a lot in, 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 you know, displaying their their military superiority over that of South Korea, even though South Korea is very much an ally of the U.S. Um, you know, Kim Jong-un has has definitely imposed his will in, in uh, declaring these things and, and bolstering their military position of, uh, you know, including the cooperation. And again, as the Akbanan just said, standing in solidarity with uh with china and russia you know and their efforts in particular that of russia and their position with the proxy war that's currently ongoing in the ukraine okay with uh kim jong-un also recently coming out and and boldly stating that he's ready to take you know take this war to the u.s i'm going to roughly paraphrase his quotes but recent reports you know he was quoted saying that more or less he's ready to, in particular he called out the united states of america called out the u.s so they're ready to, you know, they're ready for this, man. They want that smoke. As a book of Joel reads, you know, that the, that this, what does it say? Let the weak say I'm strong, roughly paraphrasing. Okay. okay. So we'll continue on here. It says North Korea has made it clear through diplomatic channels that as well as providing builders to repair war damage is ready to supply a vast superior fighting force. It says, um, 
Okay, so it says they would be deployed to the forces of the separatist pro-Putin Donetsk People's Republic, DPR, and Lunhansk People's Republic, LPR, both of which Kim has recently recognized as independent countries. Right, so again, standing in solidarity with Russia, with their national interests, with their security interests, and standing also aside China, who also share the same sentiment. Okay, so that's pretty much the point there. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring that out since you uh, just paraphrased it. I'm gonna start with the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 9 Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Mm -hmm. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. Mm -hmm. So right. all these countries, you know, no longer uh, being worried about agriculture, uh, uh, other aspects of that infrastructure of their economy, but more geared towards war being in that military war mindset of changing uh you know them being in an agriculture uh um, you know uh, workforce but turning that into making weaponry you know spending that extra money on improving their their weapons and technology and uh being those plowshares which are, are you know farming things into swords pruning hooks which go into uh, uh fishing into spears so laying the weak say I'm strong. So training their men to become soldiers. Mm -hmm. And also the weak, you know, among the nations joining forces and, you know, claiming uh, themselves to be strong enough to uh, overcome the, the power of the world, which is with the hammer of the earth broken mm -hmm. asunder. Mm -hmm. So that being the prophecy of Babylon, America, the hammer of the earth being broken. Mm -hmm. by these other nations that's right pursuant to the book of jeremiah that's right but um i'm gonna finish here with uh joel 3 and 8 i mean 3 and 11 salakia assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about tither cause thy mighty ones to come down O adawan yahabashim yahusha so the lord he's putting together he's gathering those for the battle man you know, to encamp at the round Babylon. Mm -hmm. That's right. And ultimately, again, can not only encamp around, you know, come past but, Babylon, America, but also within the Valley of Yahushua. That's Bible. right. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's the next verse here. Yeah. Uh, Joel 3 and 12. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the Valley of Yahushua. For there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. Mm -hmm. So, that's right. you know america babylon being destroyed in that third war being in the valley of jehoshaphat Jeho the middle east there mm -hmm. and ultimately them stopping in the middle of their third woe there in the middle east to fight against yahweh and the holy angels the chariots of the most high mm -hmm. and being defeated that's right so continuing on this article here just one other point and that that could be likened unto uh <clears throat> referenced in uh the war in the heavens and uh i'm gonna go ahead and pull that up so lock you bear with me just one moment and that is spoken of in revelation 12 and 7 and there was war in heaven so in the, the firmament the sky says michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels so angels are, are messengers so the dragon being the beast system the eu nato these nations fighting with esau of edom they're going to fight against the archangel michael and the holy angels the chariots of the most high and they're going to be defeated and it says uh verse eight and prevailed not so they're going to be destroyed. The EU and the NATO and these armies that are going to fight against Yahweh Shai and the holy angels. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So they're going to get destroyed, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. Beautiful. 
I'm going to continue on in this article now. Another point to reference here. It says, uh, quote, unquote, the country is ready to transfer 100,000 of its soldiers to Donbass, said the report by the pro-Kremlin news agency. Right. So, again, North Korea ready to transfer 100,000 of its soldiers. It says Pyongyang will be able to transfer its tactical units to Donbass. In return, here's the point, grain and energy would be supplied to Kim's struggling economy. All right, man. So again, as these other countries are able to sustain themselves, okay, economically, financially, but with natural resources, okay, as the world, the NATO EU uh, nations see a, a lesser supply of it, okay, because of these sanctions that they have imposed, okay, these other, these, uh, those who are becoming allies of the BRICS nations are being sustained, again, through China and Russia, the heavy players, major yeah, players. Russia, you know, taking over Ukraine, but Ukraine and Russia being the, um, the top manufacturer in the world of grain and energy. Yeah, fertilizer. Yeah, huh? that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So them being able to help sustain, um, you know, North Korea and China and those allies that they've uh, been partnering with. That's right. As uh, Russia. As, as, you know, North Korea focuses solely on military. That's right. And Russia being major producers of, of uh, natural resources, including gas and oil. Okay. Energy. That's right. And this is a, a video from uh, Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. But this, uh, you no, know, it appears to be an Edomite, but he is uh, very much so, uh, uh, you know, uh, staying on top of the news regarding these uh, military. Um, you know, exports or excursions, I should say, you know, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this video regarding China involving themselves in Ukraine and the Russian war moving uh, westward here. Chinese soldiers are now in Ukraine. Also, folks, China has sent soldiers and military equipment to fight with Vladimir Putin. Do you realize that? So let me show you this last article and then we'll get off. But time is growing so short, all of our enemies are now working together to destroy the United States of America. We are going to reap what we have sown around the world. Globalization of conflict, Chinese forces on the Donbass border, Taiwan war preparation, Folks, this is all going on right now. And, and here you have Chinese soldiers right here with the Russian soldiers. They are wearing the Russian flag. Okay. Military equipment made in China has been detected in the Rostov region of Russia near the border with Ukraine. And in particular with Donbass, which has raised reasonable concerns about the involvement in the Ukraine war. A few days ago, there were reports that hundreds of Chinese Special Forces veterans have arrived in Donbass and registered to join the Russian-backed militias of the Donetsk and Lukansk republics. The main reason, according to the same information, was for the Chinese Armed Forces to gain experience on the battlefield and see firsthand the performance of Western weapons and NATO tactics that they will sooner or later encounter in the Taiwan. <laughs> and as you see there, it said uh, that the uh, few hours ago, Russian citizens were surprised by the appearance of Chinese military equipment in the Rostov region. Mm -hmm. The main reason, according to the same information, was for the Chinese armed forces to gain experience on the battlefield and see firsthand the performance of Western weapons and NATO tactics that they will sooner or later encounter in the Taiwan war. So here's the picture of the Chinese forces with the Russians. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so they are anticipating, you know, not only to uh, invade Taiwan and to see the support of the U.S., NATO, EU nations, okay, to come to the aid of Taiwan. So they're anticipating that and preparing for that. 
and perform and performing reconnaissance okay recon but also they are standing again in solidarity with their russian allies so it's like a two for one for china you know right there they, they're uh you know they are, are uh you know doing their job doing their due diligence with scouting okay china fires missiles over taiwan over island of taiwan okay so beijing has never before sent missiles directly across the island to claim it's part of its territory right so further down as well as as we'll read it says china fired missiles over the island of taiwan the japanese defense ministry claimed the incident would mark a serious escalation as the start of a four-day military exercise right which began of course and and really became escalated with the visitation of nancy pelosi the speaker of the house okay with her recent visit to taiwan which obviously escalated uh, the tensions okay between the u.s and china so continuing on here says uh the japanese defense ministry added that chinese missiles were presumed to have landed in japan's own exclusive economic zone the eez exclusive economic zone okay now we will continue on here now it says in response taiwan activated relevant defense systems a senior military officer said at a briefing all right so not only you know with uh surrounding the island of taiwan with different military and uh you know military jets as we will as we will read okay over the past uh you know x amount of days but they are also launching ballistic missiles okay now it says china's live fire drills near taiwan send ballistic missiles into japan's eez once again the exclusive economic zone okay it is the first time that china's fired ballistic missiles into that zone now it says japan's defense minister kishi nobo said on august 4th that the chinese military launched five ballistic missiles into japan's exclusive economic zone eez during a massive military drill aimed at taiwan prompting Tokyo to lodge a diplomatic protest with Beijing. All right, so it says the incident marked the first time any ballistic missile belonging to the Chinese military had landed within Japan's EEZ. Quote, unquote, this is a grave issue that concerns our country's national security and the safety of the people, Kishi told reporters at night on the same day. Now it says uh, the, C, uh, the PLA, China's People's Liberation Army, began live fire military exercises in six air and sea areas around Taiwan on August 4th. The military exercise area included a zone just 60 kilometers from Yanaguni Island and Hateruma Island in Japan's Okinawa prefecture, prefecture, Slovakia. It says spreading tensions over Taiwan to Japan. Quote unquote, since China and Japan have not yet carried out maritime delimitation in relevant waters china does not accept the notion of so-called japanese eez right so just as china does not acknowledge the the, uh, taiwanese strait the taiwan strait as being international waters okay they are now claiming that they do not recognize the exclusive economic zone of japan right okay so this is uh you know that's pretty much the point here uh, says according to the Japanese Defense Ministry, China fired a total of nine ballistic missiles from China, five from the coast of Fujian Province, two from the coast of Zhehang, Zhehang, Slovakia, if I'm mispronouncing that province, and two from the inland area of China between 3 p.m. and shortly after 4 p.m. in Tokyo. Dam. Out of those missiles, five fell within the Japanese EEZ. All right. Okay. So that's, of course, here's a short map here okay so this being the eez boundary and uh you know mainstream china you know firing these missiles which landed of course beyond that border that's right beyond their economic zone they call it that's right man so the exclusive economic zone now quick we'll check back here okay we're good now we'll continue on here to the book of psalms chapter 7 and verse 9. you got that this is Psalm chapter 7 and verse 9. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just for the righteous power, try the hearts and reins. 
-hmm. My defense is of the most high, which saveth the upright in heart. The sure. most high judgeth the righteous, and the most high is angry with the wicked every day. Okay, man. So the wicked, you know, starting with Esau of Edom and these other heathen nations that oppress and afflict the children of Israel. Okay. The most high is angry with them every day. And as the, the scriptures also go into, the, the king's heart is in the hands of the Adawan, Yahweh. That's right. So all of these, you know, the most high is willing, you know, these countries, these leaders to buck up and come against each other. Okay. The, the disarray that's amongst these governmental bodies, so on and so forth. He has all the will of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, It is all biblical prophecy. That's right. And all these things must come to pass before the end. But we pray that the wickedness of Esau of Edom and these heathen come to an end. Their their power, their, you know, the sinful kingdom be brought to an end. But our defense is the most high, mm -hmm. which is salvation starting with the elect. Mm -hmm. That's right. So the Adawan Yahweh Hashem Al Shai is is now in these latter days establishing, okay, the reestablishing, if you will, the tabernacle of David. Okay. Mm -hmm. The men that are out there on the highways and hedges preaching and teaching this word and truth and sincerity, those are the hopeful elect. Okay. They are establishing reestablishing the tabernacle of David. Okay. And you know, for the righteousness, trying the hearts and reins, right? So again, we're being tried through the furnace of affliction, through the furnace of adversity. And we trust the Adawan Yahweh Shimi Al Shai to be our defense. Okay. He saved at the upright in heart, right? Those who are walking uprightly on the straight and narrow path towards, you know, the straight gate, right? Trying to earn salvation, trying to earn election. Okay. This is uh, Psalm 7 and 12 reads, if he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. That's right. And that term wet, W-H-E-T, wet goes into sharpen, right? So the, the sword, okay, being the modern day weaponry, and, and in particular in this case, okay, as it reads on, it says he hath bent his bow and made it ready. So it's me, the sword being, being a representation of, of weaponry, right? That how the most high is going to lay judgment. That's right. It's okay. And of destruction. That's right. And that bow, right? So what do you use with a bow? An arrow, right? The modern day arrow, okay? Or at least in comparison would be a missile. That's right. And pursuing to, uh, what is that? Jeremiah 51. Arrows that will not miss, right? Yeah, so, so those being those hypersonic missiles, uh, Salaki, I believe that will be uh, Second Ezra 16 and 13 reads, For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what's at the Western Hemisphere? Okay, what's at the end of, of, of the world, if you will, right? That's Babylon America. Okay. So all these ICBM hypersonic missiles will be shot at America, okay? Pursuant to many scriptures, okay? One example being Isaiah chapter 5, okay? And in the book of Jeremiah, so on and so forth, okay? The book of Second Ezra. So there are many scriptures that go into the downfall of Babylon America. So uh, second, or uh, it's like it, Psalms chapter 7 and 13. He hath also prepared him for, he had also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Mm -hmm. That's right. So the instruments of death, right? Again, indignation being righteous anger. Okay. The Harawan Yahabashim Yahashai has willed the preparation of these instruments, That's these right, tools. Man. That's right. And we see, um, you know, the, the Arawan, he's opening his whole tool bag. And he's used opened up the um, his whole weaponry to carry out that judgment, man, against the whole world right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. But he ordaineth his arrows, so those missiles, against the persecutors, which is Esau of Edom, chiefly here in Babylon, America, mm -hmm. and you know, in that valley of Yahweh Pot. That's right, man. And, and those and those those persecutors, which have persecuted the children of the Most High being Israelites. That's right. 
So pursue so called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. Mm -hmm. That's right. So these uh, persecutors, you know, not only going to be facing their judgment in the Valley of Hawashpat, but, you know, also here very much so in Babylon, America. Okay. Persecutors, man. Persecuting our people through rape, rob, and pillage and bloodshed of the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay. This is the land of our punishment. This is the land of our, you know, the final captivity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue on here now. So between the conflict, you know, with China, okay, and the tensions rising not only with Taiwan, but Japan, it says Reuters.com reports Japan Prime Minister to reshuffle cabinet amid Taiwan. Okay, and now it goes in and says unification church issues, but that's beside the point. Okay, so it says right here that uh, changes could be announced as soon as Wednesday. Okay, so it says right here, Kishida said cabinet reshuffle needed to address uh, Taiwan, the Crown Vic, and inflation, right? So it says right here, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said on Saturday he will reshuffle his cabinet next week to address mounting issues, including Taiwan tensions, the Crown Vic, and economic stimulus measures to counter inflation. We need to set off a new formation as soon as possible, considering the various issues, right, which he announced, okay? Well, just, you know, a couple things right here real quick now just getting straight to the point uh, here talking about uh, uh if you read here that Kishida had informed that the cabinet will reshuffle uh by wednesday you know so them you know replacing their uh defense minister noburo kishi given his quote-unquote health issues but them reshuffling their his cabinet in order to um you know provide a resolution due to uh this crown royale you know surging again and you know the defense with the uh, tensions growing between self-ruled taiwan and mainland china in recent days as it reads mm -hmm. that's right of course japan also being uh recently invited to the uh, NATO summit that I believe took place in Spain. Okay, so for uh, the first time, I believe uh, is that one of their uh, prime ministers, their prime minister was uh, invited to the, because uh, I believe uh, that they are currently not a member of NATO nor EU. However, but again, I, I could be mistaken. I believe it's NATO that they're not a member of. Now, they were just recently invited to that summit. Okay, for the first time, a representative had gone. So, they are, uh, you know, obviously going to be uh, looking to create alliances with NATO EU nations. OK, looking for that protection, if you will. OK, because they know that the time has come where, you know, China is, is now ready to make their move. You know, of course, being again aligned with the guard of the nations. OK, pursuant to Ezekiel chapter 38, you know, being aligned with Russia, standing in solidarity with them and their interests, their national interests, security interests. OK, you know, China is feeling, um, you know, feeling like they're, they're ready to go get it again. Let the weak say I'm strong, as the scriptures say. This is from Reuters.com. It's like it says Taiwan official leading missile production found dead in hotel official media states. All right. So it says the deputy head of Taiwan's defense ministry's research and development unit was found dead on Saturday morning and a hotel room, according to the official central news agency. Wu Yang Li Sing, deputy head of the military-owned National Chung Shan Institute of Science and Technology, was found deleted in a hotel room in southern Taiwan on Saturday morning, the CNA reported, said authorities were looking into the cause of death. So I'm so on a business trip, okay, to the southern county of ping tung cna said adding that he had presumed the post earlier this year to supervise various missile production projects the military owned body is working to more than double its yearly missile production capacity to close to close to 500 this year as the island boosts its combat power amid what it sees as china's growing military threat right so th this man was helping to oversee the the you know improvement 
okay, the, the, to increase the rate of missile production due to their uh, growing fear and, and tensions with China. That's right. You know, them spending billions of dollars uh, more on uh, upgrading their, their uh, missile production creating uh, drones and missiles that are able to reach the mainland of China. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Japan definitely got themselves in a, a sticky situation being so close to the conflict area of China and Taiwan, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's why they're seeking to uh, uh, go to the NATO summit to uh, figure out what they're going to do. But Japan has been so used to esau's foot up their ass you know since the um, world war ii conflict and esau establishing his democracy there them having so many military um you know bases there in japan that i i don't think he really could see any other option than running to uh esau of edom for that type of uh um you know protection guidance you know, submitting to the will of Esau of Edom. Mm -hmm. That's right. Before I further on, I'll check the comment board right quick. All right, cool. Yeah, good. I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. Hit the water, brother. Slack you. Yeah. This insiderpaper.com reports Chinese fighter jets and warships crossed median line, says Taiwan. Taipei's military said Chinese fighter jets and ships crossed the median line that it runs down the Taiwan Strait on Friday, calling Beijing's latest military drills highly provocative. As of 11 a.m., multiple batches of Chinese warplanes and warships conducted exercises around the Taiwan Strait and crossed the median line of the strait, the defense ministry said in a statement. This Chinese military exercise, whether it be the launch of ballistic missiles or deliberate crossing of the median line of the strait, is a highly provocative act. Okay, so we'll continue down and get just a little more meat off the bone here. Okay, so it says crossings of the line are sensitive because the Taiwan Strait is narrow, just 130 kilometers, which equivalents to 81 miles at its thinnest point. And incursions raise the risk of military accidents. Right, okay. So obviously they're feeling some kind of way as they should. Okay, because as you will read here, of the 49 incursions Taiwan reported on Wednesday and Thursday, 44 involved Chinese aircraft crossing the median line that's right so many of these things okay in particular chinese aircraft okay are crossing this line so tensions continue to grow and china is feeling very bold okay as they're bold here in, in making the statement here just recently insiderpaper.com reports china warns british mps against taiwan visit now it says China has warned British MPs not to visit Taiwan and threaten them with quote unquote severe consequences, the Guardian reported. The Chinese ambassador, Zheng Zeguang, said British politicians, British politicians should quote unquote not dance to the tune of the United States at a press conference in London on Wednesday. So that's what telling them in their own territory, telling them in their own land. All right, do not go over there and do as the Americans are doing. Do not dance that same tune. Basically, I'm going to say it bluntly, do not fuck with us. Okay? Pardon my Italian, as Elder Apostle Gabarro says. All right? So do not dance the tune of the U.S., all right? Don't be trying to do the stinky leg over there in Taiwan. All right? Quote, unquote, it is interference in China's internal affairs. That will inevitably lead to severe consequences in china uk relations we call on the uk side to abide by its own commitment and not to underestimate the extreme sensitivity of the taiwan issue and not to follow the us's footsteps don't do as babylon america is doing okay do not follow those foolish footsteps man all right, point blank period. Tell him you don't want this smoke. Quote unquote, as I said, those who play with fire will get burnt, Zheng said, reiterating the warning by the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, who had said the same to Joe Biden, sleepy, creepy Joe, 
last week over a phone call. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's yeah, pretty much straight to the point, right? Yeah. Okay. So straight to the point as you can get, man. That's right, man. That's right. I expect a, uh, a reaction, man. Hmm. So you know, just a little, little more, just to add on to that real quick. Uh, says it here, quote unquote. Says he uh, says he pointed out that some British politicians' attempts to help defend Taiwan would be a serious violation of the One China principle and the Sino UK Joint Communique. Communi says the nature of the Taiwan question is completely different from Ukraine. He added. He argued that the matter of decoupling between the UK and the Chinese economy is self-defeating. That's right, man. Let them know. Hey, y'all want to shoot yourselves in the foot, man. You're going to kick your own ass. All right? It's only going to hurt you. And again, China, okay, Russia having the superiority, okay, not only economically, but also militarily, okay? They're, they outgun, they outnumber, and they outdo the UK. And they're the same for Babylon America, you know? So, no, no, Russia has already, uh, you know, made threats to the UK. Uh, speaking of uh, them and their ability to to uh, use a, a missile against the UK and uh, pretty much to destroy that whole country, being a, a small country, you know, being almost uh, uh, similar to an island surrounded by water, but them uh you know flexing their ability to hit them with a missile and have waters flooding that place and pretty much destroying the land of the uk but you know these things were created by esau of edom amalek uh Timon, and you know this is ultimately going to bring about their own destruction as being the will of the heavenly father mm-hmm. and this is isaiah 54 and 16 behold i have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work and have created the waster to destroy that's right so that smith creating the um you know the atomic bomb through the manhattan project being oppenheimer and uh, bringing forth that instrument able to bring about that destruction, which is ultimately coming to America, Babylon here. Mm-hmm. And he's created the waster being Esau coming up against Esau, man. You know, Russia being a descendant of Esau. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of those Timonites being uh, Russian, but a lot of them being a uh, uh, Germanic, German and also uh, uh having roots to the ashkenazi jews which are the uh uh amaleks you know amalekites mm-hmm. so you know this ultimately has been at the will of the heavenly father to bring about their destruction mm-hmm. that's right so uh, you know the heavenly father working the right hand and the left good and evil God. and this is uh this is oppenheimer here also known as the father of the atomic bomb for his role in the Manhattan Project. Which took place during World War II. That's right, man. That's right, the undertaking that developed the first nuclear weapons. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that test being uh, observed as the Trinity test, as they like to call it, the code name for the uh, first detonation of a nuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. Which took place in New Mexico. That's right. But we'll get to the point here. And that being that Oppenheimer, born in New York City, you know, and that's known as the, um, you know, the gate of the immigration import Ellis Island and whatnot, being the uh, main hub of immigration for these uh, Europeans coming into and these uh, Eastern people coming into America. But um, he was born to a father named Julius Oppenheimer, a wealthy textile importer born in Germany. Mm -hmm. And 
that being uh, that the Oppenheimers were both secular Ashkenazi Jews, his father was German Jewish. And his mother, who was from New York, descended from a German Jewish family that lived in the US since the 1840s. And as you read here, the um, Yiddish, which is the uh, language spoken, you know, the um, broken Hebrew that these uh, Amalekites speak, as well as some of these uh, so-called little hatters in the US and Russia, they speak Yiddish, a broken version of Hebrew, which is a Germanic version of Hebrew. So it says a language used by Jewish people in Central and Eastern Europe for the Holocaust. It was originally a German dialect with few words from Hebrew in several modern languages and is today spoken mainly in the U.S., Israel, and Russia. Sorry, man. And it says here, Yiddish is a West Germ Germanic language historically spoken by Ashkenazi Jews. That's right. So not only, you know, displaying the blatant fact that, that they are not the people of the Most High, they're not the true children of Israel, okay, but also that they are the descendants of Esau. Yep, Teman and Amalek. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Teman being those uh, Germans, Amalek, uh, known predominantly as the, uh, you know, the Israeli Jews. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 14 and verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Adawan Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Sorry, Jerusalem being a people before it was a place. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. That's right. So that terminator 2 scene you know america babylon getting hit with those fireworks man being hit with those hypersonic missiles and ultimately these people melting with that fervent heat where which so the elements shall melt away that five thousand degrees but these people melting away man Damn. when that blast hits when those bombs hit america babylon here and bombs away and then we're seeing those man we're seeing the beginning of that you know we're seeing these uh these conflicts escalate and it's only going to continue to uh, ramp up that's right and that's why we pray to be of that elect number redeemed from the earth before these hypersonic missiles hit america here man that's right i don't want you how about looking shot. down from that sea of glass upon that chariot at the uh you know the lake of fire here the lake of fire being america burning via fire from those hypersonic missiles. I don't want you to help us, Yimei Oshai, as the gears of war turning. That's right. So as we'll read on here, adding more spice, adding more heat onto this thing. This is out of uh, Radio Pakistan, okay? As, which is out of the Pakistan, of course. This is UAE, United United. Arab Emirates, okay, which is a country that borders Saudi Arabia, okay, voices support of China's sovereignty. The United Arab Emirates reiterated its support for China and said it was concerned about the effect of provocative visits on stability and international peace. Right. In the UAE, known for the that money, the oil money, Saudi princes there, but them being a nation that could very well be the next one to apply for BRICS membership. Mm -hmm. As we see that mm -hmm. Turkey, a long time NATO member, mm -hmm. and as well as Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. recently being applicants to join the BRICS nations, mm -hmm. being the, um, you know, being Russia, China, Iran. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it says here, quote unquote, or continue on, it says a statement issued by the UAE, United Arab Emirates Ministry of Foreign Affairs, said it affirms its support of ch for 
China's sovereignty and territorial integrity and stress the importance of the one China principle. So why is this so relevant? Let's continue on. The United Arab Emirates to invest $1 billion in Pakistani companies, state news agency reports. Now it says the United Arab Emirates invests intends to invest $1 billion in Pakistani companies across various sectors, state news agency WAM reported, citing an official source in Abu Dhabi. It says the UAE is keen to continue cooperation with Pakistan, quote unquote, in various fields, which include gas, energy infrastructure, renewable energy, healthcare, the uh, agency added. And we know Pakistan has had a long time deal infrastructure for it in place to run a pipeline funneling gas oil from Pakistan all the way to Russia. Mm -hmm. So That's right. them working very much hand in hand with some of those BRICS nations. That's right. And as we recently brought out on another lesson, you know, just to, just to display the relevance once again, as the brother Bana just mentioned, the Pakistani relationships, you know, relationship with Russia Okay, insider paper, okay, reports here, China, Pakistan discuss extension of CPEC to Afghanistan, right? Okay, so this was reported just a few weeks ago. So according to local media, senior officials from Pakistan and China discussed the possibility of extending the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC, CPEC, to Afghanistan in order to promote economic development and prosperity in the war-torn country. Right. So continuing on, you know, it says uh, that the Pakistan foreign secretary emphasized the country's commitment to a peaceful, stable, prosperous and connected Afghanistan. Right. So war torn Afghanistan. OK, so that's they're looking to uh, stabilize the country and thus, you know, commit themselves to providing, you know, monetary resources and, uh, you know, natural resources, if you will, so on and so forth. But the point being, they're looking to, you know, create you know, alliances, okay, and relationships with Afghanistani officials and whatnot, okay? So this is something, obviously, there's a lot of uh, common denominators in the in the sense that many of these countries have a bone to pick with Babylon America and the NATO EU nations, okay? So to be continued, because you can very well anticipate that Afghanistan will soon apply for BRICS membership as well. Okay. So with the alliance that you know, the, the relationships that, that Pakistan has with both with Russia and China through CPEC, okay, now they're extending out the hand, if you will, to Afghanistan. That's right. Right? So, so now many alliances are being made, you know, to where this third world war is going to take place very quickly, man. Absolutely. So you could very well anticipate, again, the United Arab Emirates and Afghanistan, okay, to apply for BRICS membership as well. Okay. And Pakistan, of course, uh, I don't believe they've applied yet at the moment. However, uh, as of now. But you see however, them dealing the writing, very heavily with China and Russia already. Khan, the writing is on the wall. That's Khan, right. Exactly right. All right. And this is uh, Deuteronomy 20, or it's like 32 and 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no power with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that could deliver out of my hand. That's right. Babylon, you know, is suffering from that deadly wound. Mm -hmm. And there is no healing this grievous wound of Babylon, man. Mm -hmm. It is being brought down. Mm -hmm. But the Most High, He kill, He maketh alive, He pull down, He He raise up, and He's pulling down this sinful kingdom of Esau of Edom here, the wicked and rulership of the earth. And he is raising up uh, Israel, man. He's raising up the true Israelites. Mm -hmm. You so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos, starting with the elect to be in rulership right underneath Yahweh Bashem Yahweh and King David and mm -hmm. the kingdom that is being raised up. Mm -hmm. That's right. So the Ottawa Yahweh is working 
the left and the right hand. Okay, he's working the right hand of, of his, uh, you know, his judgment, right? Righteousness. That's right. And, yeah. and the left hand of that wickedness, man. That's right. He, and you're seeing a lot of judgment being carried out on two thirds of our own people because judgment starting at the house of Israel, mm -hmm. two thirds of our people that he does not find any use out of are going to be dropping like flies out here until that ultimate destruction comes. Mm -hmm. That's right. But he is also destroying these other nations as well and forming uh, armies and creating, you know, this third world. Mm -hmm. That's right. It says, for I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. That's right, man. So rendering vengeance, man, the righteous recompense. OK, the reward you know, to them that hate the Adewan Yahweh Hashem Yahweh And if we are the sons of the Most High, those that hate us as well, being the heathen and being uh, our chief adversary, Esau of Edom. Mm -hmm. That's right. And thinking of like a firework, right? A, or a missile that's falling out of the sky, right? Right. That glittering, you know, look to it, right? It's going to be light flashing. You're going to see flame, right? Maybe coming in and okay. out. And that's yeah. also pursuing to Job 20. Mm -hmm. All right, man. So mm -hmm. if again, if I wet, if I sharpen my glittering sword, Sorry, right, man. So the Adawan Yambashim Yashai has these instruments being made, uh, you know, in perfection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It says, I will make mine arrows drunk with blood. So those arrows being those missiles. And how are they going to be drunk with blood? They're going to hit their targets. You know, they're going to be hitting their targets. Arrows that shall not miss, as we just read earlier with Second Ezra. That's right. But, um, you know, how, how is that a uh, yeah, metaphor of, of drunk, you know, like a full of vengeance, you know, full of blood. Mm -hmm. And it says, my sword shall devour flesh. So as we read earlier, again, Zechariah 14, you know, the, the flesh melting off, off people's uh, bones mm -hmm. being due to those missiles hitting babylon america that's right and that with the blood of the slain and the captives from the beginning of revenge upon the enemy so how about is going to get that vengeance upon our enemies mm -hmm. that's right for the rape rob and pillage of the so-called negroes latinos and native americans that's for right. those who have been taken captive that's right and that's why Scriptures say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are spiritual mm -hmm. because we have to be in the spirit and, and seek that deliverance because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to get the vengeance for us. So his vengeance is his. Mm -hmm. Kind of, as the spirit. Mm -hmm. It says, rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. His servants being the elect. It says, and will render will render vengeance to his adversaries. Adversary being an, uh, another word for devil, being Esau of Edom, our adversary. Right, the enemy. The so-called white man. And it says, and will be merciful unto his land, and to all Slaka, and to his people. His people being Israel, the seed of Jacob so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos, starting with the elect thereof. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And that's merciful unto his land. So even though that third woe will take place in the Valley of Yahweh Shapat, he is not going to utterly destroy that land to never be inhabited like he is Babylon America here. He is going to cleanse the land by fire and prepare it for the elect to gather the elect and bring them back into the land of their forefathers, pursuing to Isaiah 14. That's right. Beautiful. And we'll finish out here, close up in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15. Start at verse 1. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, 
said the Arwan Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, will speak down to the words in the ears of my people. So who are the Lord's people? The children of Israel. Okay. In particular, if we're out there to fish for the elect, you know, Lord willing, I don't desire we'd be of that hopeful number. Okay. So out there speaking the words of prophecy. All right. So we are commanded to go out and fish for the elect to show that pursuant to Isaiah 58 and 1. Okay. To show the house of Jacob their transgressions or the house of Jacob their sins. My people, you know, their transgressions, the house of Jacob their sins, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, so the words of prophecy. What's prophecy? What's to come? The famine, the sword, the pestilence, the MOTB pursuant to Revelation chapter 13, the third woe. Okay, so these things will come to pass. So these are given to us through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, which is a gift, and through the tutelage of the elder apostles of Great Millstone, GMS on down and like-minded Akiyam, okay? Through the learning of, you know, these holy scriptures, okay? Through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shai. 2nd Ezra 15 and 2. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true, right? So we know that the Arwan is not a man that he should lie, okay? And we know that the word of the Arwan Yahweh Shai does not come back void. Verse 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. That's right. So we're in the time approaching Amos 8 and 11, the famine of the word, the great persecution as our forefathers, as Hamashiach Yahawashiah was persecuted for this truth and vilified, demonized for it. Thus, we will be as well. Those who believe and wholeheartedly, you know, to the best of our ability, and according to the proportion of our faith, teach and preach this word, okay? As we make our bodies a living sacrifice out on the highways and hedges, okay? As we continue to do so, as is commanded, okay? We will not fear the incredulity, right? The let not the incredulity, which goes into unbelief, okay? Then the trouble these that speak against thee, right? So we cannot consider these things, okay? We have to be bold as lions. And go out there with no fear, okay? Go out there with all sincerity and, and uh, you know, and all, you know, to the best of our ability once again and preach this in truth, okay? Second Ezra 15 and 4. For all the unfaithful shall die and their unfaithfulness, right? So those who are not faithful to Adawanya, how about Shema Oshai, will die in their unfaithfulness, point blank, period. Those who are of the two thirds, of the children of Israel will be reborn through the loins of the elect in the kingdom to come. And they will be born in perfection with the law, statutes, and commandments of Adawan Yahweh Bashim written in their inward parts. However, they must know the ways of the Adawan Yahweh after death by pain. Okay, so verse 5 Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world the sword, famine, death, and destruction that's right we're seeing the beginning of these things the judgment these lot these are uh, missiles being launched okay you know great great famine approaching great famine okay as it, it's it's touching other parts of the world more so than babylon america at this moment however we're starting to see the beginning of it and, and we see that it's on the cusp of being taken to a whole nother level death great death okay I don't want you to help us. I continues to turn up and lay down judgment day in and day out. And destruction. That's right. The Lord's visitation upon the earth. Okay. Floods, earthquakes in diverse places, fires, so on and so forth. Okay. I don't want you to help us. I continues to visit the earth day in and day out. Okay. Verse six. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. That's right. So that's the point there. So, okay, the wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and it is time. Okay, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has, has deemed it so. He's willing these things to take place, and ultimately these signs to come. Okay, because uh, we, we know that the end draweth nigh because we are able to see the signs filtered through the scriptures, through the prophecies. Okay, and the hurtful works are fulfilled, right? The wicked, okay, Esau of Edom, you know, was given an allotted amount of time to rule this earth by the sword, 
Okay, he was only given the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth for an allotted amount of time. Okay. So this is the beginning of that transition. Okay. For, uh, you know, and, and as the scriptures say, man, Esau is the end of this world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And we're seeing the beginning of that transition. We just must continue to endure and uh, watch for the prophecies. Okay. And continue to, uh, you know, hasten the day, eagerly await the return of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Oh, we must patiently endure. So I don't want to the Zah. You know, we'd be up that number, that hopeful number that does not see death here on this side. That's right. So, Lord willing, we're going home soon. So we just got to continue to fight for this truth unto death and continue to have hope in the salvation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So we, we pray that this lesson has been edifying to the hopeful elect of Israel, the tabernacle of David. As always, we want to close out by giving all honor, glory, and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Once again, double honors to our elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well. Shalom to the hopeful elect, the men, the Akim, laboring in this truth and sincerity, pushing this word across all four winds, risking their lives and freedoms to do so. Shalom, peace be unto you and your households. And also, shalom to the hopeful elect, all the Akim and the Aqua, the believers, the hopeful elect, the tabernacle of David. Peace be unto you and your households as well. That's and right, shalom. 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 The water for tuning in. And right. we'll go ahead and close out by cursing this place. Abad Babal, DTA, Sue. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Shalom. shalom.